Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Play is about to resume here. The Barbarian's penalty expires at 827. They have about 40 seconds or so to work with. Numbers are hard, so I don't pretend to count things. Kevin State will play the puck forward. Up to Allison Rapp. Allison gets to the puck in time and is able to poke it out of the neutral zone. Todd Elling is able to get it behind her, though, but his backhand pass goes to nobody except David Berlinger. Danny Rubert plays all the way up to Lou. Lou is held up by Marty Vance. David's shot goes high in the sky. Was deflected off of Marty's stick. Danny Rubert moving with the puck. Shot attempt. It's in front. Lou cannot hammer it home, however, it goes behind the net. And the Barbarians penalty is about to expire. It goes to Todd Elling, Todd to Blake. Blake to Matt, and offside is the call by the referee, so Barbarians have to touch up, they do. Lou tries to get to Danny Ruberg, but Molly Siders was there to cut off the pass. Blake Harvey, his shot is deflected by Jake Hasner. Allison Rapp trying to get there first. Ooh, a bouncing puck gets by Todd Elling's feet. And he will have to retrieve it in the corner. Played up the boards, intercepted by Daniel. Daniel, eye in the sky. Knocked down by Marty, and Marty will take it forward. Intercepted by Lou. He's moving with, he has a chance shot, and a save by Jason Stelter. Lou could not get to the rebound in time. Another shot taken by him, but it is covered up in the armpit of Jason Stelter. Outstanding work by Lou. Continuing to generate shots. He's got one goal today. He was looking for another, but it does not find Twine. Huck Dynasty making it a game here. They are playing very well against this Barbarians team. A far cry from last season when they were when they were facing a much larger de deficit against the team. Drop of the puck, it's won by Puck Dynasty. Seth gets it to the front of the net, a bouncing puck here, it is loose. Brennan tried to get to the puck, but could not do so. Played up to Greg, intercepted by Wiley, good work by her. Gets all the way down, gets back to Greg, a shot is taken by Kevin. And played to his man. Seth, trying to dive for the puck there, could not do so. It does go out of the neutral zone, however, and that forces the Barbarians. Touch up. Played up. Barbarians looking for an icing call there. They're not going to get one. Played along with Daniel Ruberg. Daniel's shot is deflected high in the sky. He will come away with a puck again, though. After a couple fortuitous bounces. Daniel to set. The centering pass, it went off of the Barbarians player. A backhand shot by Daniel, and now a shot by Wiley goes to the side of the net. The steer to the side with the blocker of Jason Stoke. Good. Played up to Meg. Meg spinning past there to Brian Slasky. Dumped in the zone. Puck Dynasty will play behind their own net to Danny Ruber. Danny Ruber moving with the puck. Played up. It is offside. So Puck Dynasty has some time and space to work with. Mike Medina will move with it. Continuing to move, but. The stick of the Barbarians is there to block his path. A long shot taken. It goes wide of the net, but it was at center, so no icing here. Played up by Mack. No icing again as Wiley Ruberg is able to make a play on the puck. Wiley gets it to Andrew. Andrew plays it to center. Mack is able to lift the stick up, but offside is the call. Greg was not yet back over the pink line, and Max pass to him results in a stoppage of play. Faceoff will happen right below us at the best seat in the house, folks. Best seat in the house brought to you by Sonic Promos, the official sponsor of both the DCHL and the RHL ball hockey leagues. They have provided some of the jerseys for these teams, including the fancy Puck Dynasty jerseys you have been seeing all game. For all your promotional and advertising needs, call Sonic Chromos today. Lou takes a spill here. No penalty will be assessed. It is ruled incidental contact. Lou wants the call. He's not going to get one. He's got to be careful not to antagonize the referee. Andrew Kramer moving forward. Andrew. Nice move there, but he was held up by Corey. Lou will be assessed the penalty here, and Marty will as well. He grabs the puck and threw it. 
So Lou, Lou will be assessed a roughing penalty, and I don't think referee Sud saw Marty throw the puck, so no penalty assessed by the Barbarians here. It will be a penalty by a Dynasty and a power play opportunity for the Barbarians with 3.55 and counting left in the game. They have a two-goal lead and a chance to extend it to a three-goal lead if they score here. Play in the corner, Wiley Rubel, or I'm sorry, Dan, Diane Leitner. Sometimes they look the same from this far away, folks. Good pass by Corey, good shot by Marty, but a better save by Kevin Shea, who was able to get a piece of the puck. It is out of the zone. Barbarians have to touch up, they do. And Stavl, able to at least hold up Corey's advance a bit. Swing and a miss, though, by Diane. Good block by Ben Stavl. And Ben will clear the puck all the way out. Jason to Jason, and Jason Maxine will clear it all the way up the boards to Corey. Corey, looking for a shot, takes one, but it goes wide. Kevin Shea coming way out to play that puck. Goes to Molly Molly, shot attempt, it's intercepted by Andrew Kramer. Andrew running hard for the puck. Goes to Mike Medina, Mike Medina with a chance here. He takes a shot, it goes wide. Danny Ruberg's there for the puck. He's looking for Mike Medina, Mike. Backhand centering attempt goes off the foot of Corey. Corey moving with the puck now. Good job by Diane and Andrew to get back on defense. Andrew will be first to the puck against Molly Siders. Nice stick handling work there and all the way up to David. No icing here as David won the race. David Burnley, another centering pass that actually went off the stick of Jason Selter. And Todd Ellie now advancing forward. Diane swipes it aside, it goes to Andrew. Andrew only has two minutes left here. He takes a long shot that doesn't get anywhere near the net. Meg to Todd, Todd spinning around with the puck. Good swipe by Daniel. Todd moving. He chooses to go back in neutral zone, takes a long shot from a little ahead of center. Diane Lightman now. Gets it up to Daniel Ruberg. Daniel to Andrew. Andrew, nice jump there. He takes a shot, goes wide of the net. Go, trickling puck, still in the zone. Greg has to get it out, he does. No, it is still in. Daniel Ruberg has a chance, but the puck continues to bounce along and there, are, there were several Barbarians players ahead of Daniel to make that play. Yeah. There. He is shoved by Greg, and Greg will be assessed the penalty. Andrew coming in to defend his teammates. 105 and counting. I think the clock will continue to roll. No, it, it is stopped here. Clock is stopped at 101. And Greg for the rough. Greg for the rough. Greg for the rough. Puck Dynasty has a power play. The goalie has been pulled. So Puck Dynasty has some time to work with. Timeout taken by Puck Dynasty. Or no, by the Barbarians rather. Puck Dynasty took their earlier timeout. The Barbarians are taking one now so that they can Talk about what they need to do. Only a minute to work with, actually a minute and one second, but that is still plenty of time for two goals to be scored. Barbarians scored their first two goals very quickly in the span of about a minute, maybe a little less than that. So still within reach for Puck Dynasty, but they have to be perfect here. This is Delter, readjusting his goalie pads. The empty net there for Puck Dynasty. They have no other choice. They have to get the sixth attacker out there. Six on four right now, ladies and gentlemen. Puck Dynasty has time to work with. But they need to score quickly and efficiently. Referee Suds is informing the teams that the clock will not stop 
at under a minute because the deficit is at two. So, so that makes it even more important for Puck Dynasty to score here. If they score, then the clock will stop at under a minute. If they do not, then the clock will continue to roll. So a crucial, crucial moment for Puck Dynasty. One to Andrew Kramer, a shot attempt is taken, but it is deflected by Corey. Corey moving with the puck here. There is a whistle. And an injury, injury timeout here. The clock will stop. A sliding penalty on Marty is actually assessed here. Marty will be assessed sliding here. The clock continues to roll. No, they're going to put additional time here. Back on the clock, a sliding penalty has been assessed to Marty. So it is a six on three opportunity for Puck Dynasty. They have two power play chances here, essentially. If they score a quick goal, they will still have a man advantage and a chance to score another goal. So a crazy turn of events here, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody expected this, I'm sure. But with 54 seconds left on the clock, Puck Dynasty has a three-man advantage and a chance to score not just once, but twice on power play opportunities. One by Puck Dynasty, goes to Wiley. Wiley with the shot, steered aside with the